Hey, this is Zach Galligan here, and I am doing a message for the 80s slasher librarian. You know, I have some questions actually about your name. Does that mean that you are a librarian for 80s slasher movies? Or does that mean that you were born in the 80s and you're a librarian and you kill people? So you're an 80s slasher librarian. Yeah, see, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, I was just thinking about that because, you know, the, um, the nickname is a little, it's a little confusing. This is Zach Galligan, Billy from Gremlins 1 and 2, and you are listening to the 80s Slasher Librarian. See, now you can use that part. And now you don't need the part where necessarily I'm questioning whether you're actually a killer or just a librarian or from the 80s. Or any or all of the above. Anyway, enjoy and good luck. Uh, Terrifier. Have you guys seen that? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, um, I'm excited for the second one to come out. Yeah, Terrifier. <coughs> Terrifier. I, 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 you know, Roger Slasher Pepper had had recommended it, and then I found a friend of mine who doesn't really like horror films. Loves Terrifier. I'm like, okay, well, I, I gotta check that out. Saw that the other night. That was great. Me and Roger are about to have a championship battle, man. We are all tied up on the Leprechaun series. Oh, are you? I go. Yeah, we're going into the eighth movie. Uh, this uh, coming Friday, he'll drop it, and we'll know. Who, we're we're gonna film it in a few days. Um, the funny thing is, though, on Leprechaun in the Hood, I think that's the one we did it on. We tied. Like we had. I, the, I saw that one. That blew our mind. Like, yeah. we couldn't believe that. So that made it where it was possible that we could tie up before the last one. And uh, we did. Like, uh, it looked like he was going to win, but I got him on the seventh movie, and that tied us up. So it's going to be fun when we do the Leprechaun Returns. We just did the horrible remake one, that Leprechaun right. Origins, the reboot. That movie was so bad. It, they should have called it Little Turd Monster Origins. <laughs> It didn't even, it, it, it's not a leprechaun, it's not the leprechaun, and it's just so bad. Um, they they blurred him out because they didn't want to show off the makeup for him, you know, like he was always like blurry looking. Uh, even even after they revealed him, they still kept going to POV shots instead of showing him uh, most of the time. And uh, But Leprechaun Returns goes back to like the cheesiness of the other, of the other ones. It just doesn't have Warwick. It's somebody else playing the part, but it's not. It's not as bad as Origins. But uh, uh, he talked about us doing a Freddy versus Jason drinking game, a three-way one, like Team Freddy, Team Jason, Team Human, so he could uh, take on me and you at the same right. time. Right. Yeah. He mentioned that. I think that's uh, a great idea. Yeah, I told him I'm down for it. Just you know, whenever you and him, you know, he's got a really crazy schedule he's doing a lot of interviews and stuff these days oh i know he's real he's he's burning it up on those interviews Jeez. his channel's gonna blow up he's gonna hit the he's gonna hit the algorithm one day and it's gonna blow up because he he's got a lot of great content are we technically recording right now or yeah, are we we're recording? Just, we're recording i know if we had started this thing or are we just like oh. talking before the thing yeah it's we're talking realize uh but yeah you can start us up okay um so all right, Alex, uh, welcome to episode question mark of After the Slash. So here we're going to talk for approximately about 30 seconds about Freddy Krueger's deadly disguise and then just talk about whatever really pops up on our minds. Uh, we have a unpopular horror opinion section, a what the fuck horror section, and general, you know, randomness. And possibly some Dark Tower discussion. I'm up to wolves. Yeah, I'm up to wolves of the collar on my re-listen of the audiobooks. So, um, I got some stuff I want to talk about later. Um, uh, the first thing, uh, this was something I wanted to talk about in the other one, but it was slightly irrelevant. What when we're going through the animatronics of this haunted house, it reminded me. I found out a fact about. Do you remember the live-action Scooby-Doo movie? Yeah. <laughs> One of the main criticisms is that the movie's very unbalanced. Some of the parts are really dark. Some parts are just goofy as hell and very childlike. But when they're in the haunted house, you know, the animatronics and everything, there's a lot of money put into that. 
and into all the the effects, the the animatronics, and I was looking to see where's the money going. I found out that the movie was originally supposed to be for adults who grew up with Scooby Doo, and this one was supposed to be an R rated horror movie. Even all the cast had huh? dialogue that oh. was supposed to be rated R, but at the last minute, someone was like, "Abort! Abort! We need to make it a kids movie." And they're like, "Oh man, yes, we oh. spent all the budget." And they're like. Um, CGI some monsters and make them look like shit. So that's why there's these ugly, cheap CGI monsters. Because even some of the characters seem confused at parts because it wasn't supposed to be a kids movie. It got turned into one at the last minute. I'm just. I noticed that the second one is way more kid like. You know. Yeah, that's because of the budget and everything. I just I was researching and I watched the movie and I can completely tell what they cut and what they tried to edit at the last minute. Looking back on it. Think after you said that it makes sense, but I will say I always loved the fact that Scrappy Doo was the villain. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. I love that, and I love when they're like, he wasn't even a puppy. He just had like a what was it, a metabolism problem or something? Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't even a puppy. Um, was that James Gunn who who did the first Scooby Doo? Maybe I, I think so. I think it was, which I I didn't know until recently, and that now makes. <laughs> The idea of a James Gunn horror version of Scooby Doo. I oh, want to see that amazing. I want to see that way more than I want to see the Snyder cut. Take my money. Uh, you can have all of it. Um, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, man. Um, volume three isn't going to be the same without without the same director. He's he's back. Yeah. They got him back. I heard he was. Yeah, I heard he came back. Whew, okay, cool. I heard that they, they got rid of that. They weren't going to let him come back for it, so. You know, that they did. Then then he got um, uh, Suicide Squad, and then after that, they, they, they changed their mind because everybody was freaking out on them. Um, and so they, they hired him back. He's going to do Volume 3 after Suicide Squad. Okay, cool. And I heard the Suicide Squad's going to be, like, kind of a follow-up, but more of, like, a reboot. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I heard. I heard Idris Elba was going to be in it, and he's awesome, so, you know, I'll see it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, anything Suicide Squad, I'll check it out. Uh, there was an animated DC film. Uh, it was the Arkham something. It was... Assault on Arkham. Assault on Arkham, That yes. was real. That was what the movie should have been. Yeah, that was an amazing... DC makes amazing animated films, and I feel like, it, for the most part, if they would just, like, go big budget on some of their animated films, you know, with... with a-list actors doing the voices, really go all at with the graphics and everything. I think they would make a lot more money on their movies well, sticking see, the, to animation. The Suicide Marvel's Squad, you know, they do a lot. They do like missions and stuff, but I, the whole movie was about saving the world, and that was just that was too big. That was yeah. way too big. And how many times do we have to hear Will Smith say, "We're gonna save the world," you know? We're the bad guys. <laughs> Take on that to the bad guy. Yeah, I was not a fan. Marvel fits live action better than DC. DC, yeah, animation is always. I, I don't. I don't think there's. There's probably not even five of the animated films DC's made that I didn't like. Um, yeah, for the but, most part, they're PG thirteen or R. I mean, clearly Warner Brothers' whole strategy over the live action part has been a mess for for a long time, and it's much more about warring. Aut- you know, auteurs and the, these very singular visions, which Marvel very quickly clicked the vision part up, you know, to the management level, letting a bunch of auteurs make different kinds of movies, uh, which, which, you know, everybody gets to make the movie that's natural to them, and that's why these movies work so well. Whereas, the, the DC stuff, and, and maybe this is the unpopular opinion, but uh, the, the DC stuff was sort of like, you know, everybody has to make their movie like Zack Snyder makes a movie or like uh, Kevin Nolan makes a movie. And, and that that then forces everybody, a bunch of people into boxes that they don't, they can't fit in. Yeah. And I think DC lets too much, they, they worry too much about what a particular group of audience is telling them, you know, because the changes they made with Justice League, if they would have just stuck to what they had, it probably would have gone over so much better. Look at all the attention the uh, the Snyder Cut's getting. Yeah, well, but but that's them paying attention to a certain group of people anyway. I mean, that they're 
the there was reasons why they they did that based on the reception of of uh, Batman versus Superman. I mean, look what happened back in the day with Batman. I mean, Bat Batman the um, the Joel Schumacher Batman's made zillion billion dollars, but people hated them. Yeah, yeah. Which is why, despite how much money they made, they stopped making them because people hated them. Yep, and I guess they thought that might happen here, you know, with Justice yeah. League, but it, you know, they lost a lot of money on that one. Um, I don't mind talking superhero stuff, guys. I'm all about that. Uh, this is after the slash, so the slash is over. Um, but yeah, Joker. That was a really good DC film. Uh, yeah. I, okay. I I don't know what anybody saw in that film. Really, you didn't care for it? Nope. 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 I, I appreciate that opinion. You know, uh, that's what's cool about us horror fans. We can disagree about stuff and not go to war with each other over it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I absolutely won't push this button on my computer that knocks off his side of the screen, so it's just <laughs> us. I, you know, I won't put, you know, there's, there's, there's no button. You know, there's nothing like that. Well, we had a guest tonight. Uh, <laughs> now, but what I thought was funny is when Joker was about to come out, uh, the director and everything's like, this is a standalone movie. This is my vision. We're going to do one movie, no sequels, da 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 and then after all that money got made, I would be up for a sequel if, you know, it, it all comes down to the money. You know, it, it, it was supposed to be artistic vision. And then all of a sudden, after it makes a billion dollars, he's all about making more of them. Uh, I, you know, I was thinking that. But you remember we talked about that fan film, which was uh, it was called Joker Rising. Yeah. And then it made the sequel, which was Clown P Prince of Crime. And, you know, Joker Rising is like a standalone film, but Clown Prince kind of took the first film and said, what would that Joker be like in Gotham with Batman? And it has a complete tonal shift, but I liked it. It was interesting. If DC would go that route and let there be, because DC is all about the multiverse. Yeah. You know, if they would let, because they've always been about like, well, Superman, we, Superman Returns is out, so Tom Welling can't put on the Superman suit on Smallville. You know, um, the, the Joker movie's coming out, so we can't have Joker on Gotham. You know, if they would let yeah. go of that and let there be different versions of these heroes and stuff in movies, I think that would be really good for them. Because that's what the com DC Comics are all about. There's, like, different storylines of the same heroes and villains going on all at once. Well, they're trying to do... I heard Marvel was trying to get Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire to be three different Spider-Man in one movie, like, you know, the Spider-Man in the Multiverse movie that yeah. just came out. Um, and that would be amazing, because it would break the mold on what you can do in a movie. Just, just The Spider-Man cartoon showed us that if you just had fun with it, you can make a great movie. Just don't be so serious about it. Right. And Marvel's Marvel's heading very heavily into the multiverse uh, concept, anyway. Um, you know, between Sp the Spider-Man stuff, which I know is Sony, but the yeah. whole business with Doctor Strange and and WandaVision is all the is all multiverse oriented, and let let alone the, the all the seeding they did for that in the in the last uh, Spider-Man movie as well. I, I enjoy the DC lineup on CW too, for the most part. Well, that's the other thing is that's where that's really besides the animation, that's what DC has been knocking out of the park for years. Yeah, is their 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 TV. Now here's a here's a side note that that actually goes back to slasherness. One of the one of the uh, lead producers of all the DC things was Sean Cunningham's producer on. Uh, Freddy versus Jason, and a friend of mine. Mm. So, so there's a there's a there's a horror uh, horror hookup uh, to all the DC stuff on the CW right now. Nice. Oh yeah, I heard a few years ago they were even talking about making like a uh, Friday the Thirteenth TV series on CW, and it fell yeah, through. That was that was under development up until last year because I was talking to Sean and his his current producer Chris uh, we were talking video game stuff but they had been in development with um, 
actually at CBS was the last place that they, they had a development deal for it, but it fell through, I think, last year. Might have, but this was, it fell through before the whole Friday the 13th rights issue okay. happened. So probably they, 18 then. Yeah, so they were, but they had been in development for that for like a, um, about a year. It sounded intriguing, you know. It would have, I definitely would have been on top of it. I just hope it would have got done right. I'm, I'm curious about this whole thing with the Chucky TV series because yeah. it's going to be on Sci-Fi and USA. Like, are they going to split the episodes between the two different networks, or are they going to run them? Some, you know, what is that all about? It said it's going to be big event, two networks. You know, this show's too big for one network, is what the trailer was saying. So. I don't What's know, but that? at least the cast, Jennifer Tilly, Brad Dourif, like they, they're all coming back. So, I mean, I'm I always said, that means something. I always said Cult of Chucky would have been so much better. Uh, like, uh, there was this redheaded nurse in Cult of Chucky that worked at the hot, at the uh, insane asylum that it took place. If they would have just went all in with their mythology that they'd built up, even the shitty mythology like Seed of Chucky, and you find out at the end that the nurse was Glinda. You know, yeah. from the end of Cedar Chucky, the redheaded one, uh, mm -hmm. the girl, uh, you know, stuff like that. But they've just totally ignored that movie. Um, ex but except for Jennifer Tilly taking over, or, or uh, Tiffany taking over Jennifer Tilly's body. They kept that part, so. I think that was my favorite line in the movie. Has anyone ever told you you look like Jennifer Tilly? I get that a lot. <laughs> I'm glad she's there. I I'll, I I won't mind looking at her forever, man. She well, is see, so like she's funny on Twitter because she'll have she'll be like hanging out at the pool, but she'll have the Tiffany doll in the chair beside her. Like just she's she's really funny on Twitter. Of course, the TV show is going. It's Colt of Chucky introduced the multiple doll thing. Uh, so the TV the show first. What's that? The multi doll verse. The multi doll verse, right there. Not to be confused with the multi doll man verse, which uh, I'm going to talk about some of that in a minute. Um, but yeah, the multiple Chucky thing. They could have done this TV show without Tip, without Jennifer Tilly at all. It could have just been one of the dolls that you know he that Brad possessed. Because at the end of Cult, he's possessing uh, the girl, anyways. Uh, the like the main Chucky is. I don't understand. I'm so confused after watching that movie. You know, like 10 Chucky's yeah. running around. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. It's not bad. It's better than Seed of Chucky, I can tell you that. But it's well, not. They brought, they brought back Kyle from Child's Play 2. Yeah, so that was That's cool. going to be interesting as well. Oh, wow. Well, she was at the end of Colt, yeah. She's in an end credit scene or whatever. Um, but what I was going to say about Doll Man, I thought of a uh, unpopular horror opinion I can throw out there. Okay. And I'm not going to do the whole spinning the, the name thing, because that is so hard to throw in there, by the way, when I'm editing. The unpopular horror opinion and the words are spinning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it just covers everything up. Um, somebody was telling me they didn't like the... Uh, oh, my God, why can't I think? Uh, Puppet Master series. Yeah. And I love the Puppet Master. Like, Puppet Master, Demonic Toys... Even the Doll Man movies, I can sit down and watch those. I watched, uh, I'd never seen the Doll Man until the other day. And not only did I watch the Doll Man movies, which are really super cheesy, but there is a Doll Man versus Demonic Toys movie. And uh, it's, it's not as bad as Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys, but I love them both. So I love movies like that. Ghoulies, all but Ghoulies 4. That one just, ugh, I don't know. Um, Puppet Master's been with me for a while. I mean, you remember that Boogeyman movie I keep telling you about? Where it showed clips of, like, the most popular oh, yeah, horror yeah, movies? One of them was Puppet Master, and it's the scene at the end of the first one where they have the bad guy in the elevator, and all the toys are killing him one by one. That was the scene I saw, and that made me watch the, the movies. And the, thir the third one's my favorite. That's my absolute favorite. But, um, you know, that, that series. all in with Nazi stuff with the last couple. Yeah, did you see the remake? No, I guess not. They remade it. The oh, remake Retro, is good. No, it's a remake that just came out. It's got um, Bar Barbara Crampton from Reanimator. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, she she's the cop that... See, in this movie, Toulon actually was a Nazi, 
and he used his dolls to kill Jews, and he came to America to basically escape persecution, and he gets gunned down in America, so his toys, they made, he made copies, he made copies, and they're all over the country, and basically there's a convention where everyone's bringing two lawns puppets to one convention center to sell them and get money, and then the toys start killing people. Ooh. So there's multiple blades, and they all are different versions of each other. One of them's like the true blade, one of them is the pseudo blade, but they all have quirks. Is and, um, is the is is it still the 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 same filmmaker or is it a fresh set of eyes on the on the? Remake? I think it's a fresh set of eyes. Uh, Tuan is played by um, Udo Kidder, or I, I can't pronounce his name, but I always remember him from Ace Ventura. He was the the host of the party. Um, I'm sorry about the plumbing, Mister Ace. <laughs> um, he's Tuan in this. Is Charles Band still connected to it though? Uh I. Do not know. I just can't see him handing it over. Is my thing. Uh, well, it's it's called the Littlest Reich. It's it's not a sequel to the other ones like these. Uh, no, it's different directors. Um, a Charles Band was a a credit for the original characters. I don't know what production studio did this one. I liked it. So it's a remake, not a sequel. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a revisioning of the first film. Interesting. That explains, yeah, because we were, I was looking into, because they, uh, um, what what was their, full, full Moon, Phantom Moon? Whatever band's uh, production company used to be out of Paramount. And so I used to, I remember the Puppet Master movies from a long time ago. And then last year I was trying to find the rights to Puppet Master to make a video game. <laughs> oh, man. That and, would be fun. <laughs> and that's when I found out that they were no longer at Paramount, and I could not hunt down where 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 Puppet Master went, other than somebody had, was some, some company uh, was selling, basically had all the videos that were made, and they were selling them online, and I thought Band was, in, was, uh, was involved, but I didn't know they were still making any movies. Would yeah, they're go... still doing sequels to Puppet Master. This remake, it, like, forked off the, you know, series. Would If you made a video game with Puppet Masters, would you go story mode or, like, asymmetrical players versus players mode with it? The, 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 it was going to be an asymmetrical game. Because okay. I was working with one of the original creative directors on the Friday the 13th game. We, we were we were he, he we were looking at we were looking at Puppet Master, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which we got really close with, but we got outbid by somebody and uh, Killer Clowns. Oh man, any that's my, luck? That's my dream. Is uh, I've been trying to make a Killer Clowns game for like twenty years. Did their sequel get canceled again? <laughs> that. If you talk to MGM, there never really was a sequel, um, at least not one with the Kyoto Brothers. Okay. Um, um, that said, the, the, at one point I talked to them about doing a TV sh uh, Well, I talked to them about a sequel about 20 years ago. And then they were going to do a... They wanted to do a um, TV series. Then there was a TV series announced, like, for sci-fi. At the same was, time as Critters. Yeah, and that wasn't real, so that oh. not, isn't happening. But a friend of mine was working for the Kyoto's on a new film that they just did, and a CG animated film, and said that they're now back to talking to MGM about doing um, doing something with Killer Clowns again. And nostalgia sells, man. And even if uh, they're afraid of like how it performed when it first came out. I guarantee if they did another Killer Clowns project right now, it would sell like hotcakes, oh, man. Oh, believe me. Believe me. They're, they're, it, is, it is ridiculous that by now there hasn't been a, 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 another Killer Clowns movie by someone, by anyone. And, and, and I blame myself because I'm the only one who apparently has cared about this for 20 years. And I just keep going back and they, they give me the rights because not much is going on with it. And, and I can't get anybody behind doing a video game for it. 
That's the great thing about the internet. Now all these people who have all these passions can like connect to each other, and you know the people that watch these videos maybe maybe will catch someone. Yeah. They have this. They have this killer in Dead by Daylight called uh, the Legion, and it's four different people. It's like a little cult, like a teenager cult. They, it's like it's pretty much like their original version of Scream, kind of. Even though they got the real ghost face in the game now, this came out first. So it introduced having a killer that could have four different forms, right? I was thinking it, it would be cool to see the killer clowns pop into that game and you could choose between the different ones. Um, but I would be more intrigued to see a full game based on them than just getting to play them as a killer. Yeah. Um, but it would be cool just to put people in cotton candy and carry them around on my shoulder yeah, and throw them up on a hook. Back in the day, I, I wrote a three-movie cycle for Killer Clowns. I had a reboot where you were the worst, and this was going to be the game. The game story was going to be you're the worst party clown in the world. You're just terrible. And while you're performing at a kid's party, the Killer Clowns actually invade and kidnap everybody in town except for you because you're such a bad clown. <laughs> and the whole story is about you know becoming the ultimate clown to so this works both from a story standpoint and from a game standpoint because you keep collecting clown tech and you finally have to face off against the killer clowns themselves and then you become the most powerful clown in the world by the end of it Speaking and then the second, that. what oh i have something to say when you're done with that uh, okay, and then the second one was going to be essentially War of the Worlds with clowns, where it's just like a gigantic massive attack. And then the third one is you travel to the planet of the clowns to find that the different countries are different types of clowns. So the, the European clowns are like the Cirque du Soleil clowns, and the American clowns are more like the killer clowns, and you just, you just have to then go through the entire world and destroy the, a world of clowns. Wow. But you would have cost a lot of money to do all that. Yeah. You you talking about King Clown reminded me of this horror movie I saw. It was um it was just called Clown, but it was by Eli Roth. Have you all seen oh. that? Oh yeah. Yeah. That is good. That was really oh, good. You no, know, that's good. I was thinking of that awful like um Vile the Clown. It was like a Kevin Smith's friend made probably the most disgusting clown movie ever. Ooh. I haven't seen that one. I guess. The Cl it starts with a V, but it's 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 horrifying, and oh, not horrifying because it's scary, but horrifying because of what it is. It's just it's almost unwatchably grotesque. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? I can't stand. The older I get, when we were doing uh, out of print slashers earlier. I said there was something I was going to bring up on After the Slash. And I said, I'll talk about that later. And I have no idea what it was. And I can't trigger anything in my head to remember what it was. So, uh, yeah. It happened to me. There were like two episodes of our Out of Print Slasher where I was like, I got a perfect cast for Dark Tower. And then it just it never happened until like three <laughs> episodes after the fact where no one even remembers I was talking about that. I love how Stephen King will, will defend, he'll be so nice, and you can tell he's wanting to, like, crap on something. Like, he'll talk yeah. about Justice League, or not, why am I saying Justice League? He'll talk about Dark Tower, um, yeah. the movie, <clears throat> you know, and he'll, he'll, he'll sit there and give you a whole list of why it doesn't work. But they did such a wonderful job with this, you know, and this, and, you know, and... He'll do that with, I've never seen him just completely crap on a movie that's based on his work. And uh, there's been some bad ones, you know. Uh, Dark Tower, what they did with that was they tried to make it Hollywood, you know. They tried to take seven books, cram it into an hour and a half, not even two hours, you know, hour and a half. The movie's an hour and a half long and it's seven books and they just, let's just take this, this, and this and throw it in there, you know. Because the Dark Tower is not a uh, Act One, Act Two, Act Three type story, and uh, it was never going to work. The movie I got done, and I was out of breath. I'm like, oh, like you just jumped through a whole series like that. Yeah, just if they had thrown in a lobstrosity, maybe I would have given it half a star. You know, 
but we didn't we didn't get it we didn't get a data check or a data chum or nothing. So. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, I'm I'm to the part of the story on my re-listen of the audiobooks at Wolves of the Kala with uh, Father Callahan from Salem's Lot. Yeah. Mm. And it drives me crazy that he throws such a hissy fit about Susanna possibly getting an abortion of a demon baby. <laughs> you know, he, he knows it's a demon. It doesn't really... The, the rules of Catholicism doesn't really apply to a demon. And he's sitting here like, if you say anything to her about doing that, I'll make sure everybody kicks you out of town, votes against you. And, you know, it's like, is that out of character for him? I mean, would he really I don't remember that part? Yeah, he, he makes a whole thing about it. And then uh, Roland even tries to trick him. And he's like, well, what if she makes the suggestion? He goes, and for a second, Father Callahan don't know what to say. He's like, well, you'll talk her out of it because you're their den. You know, I just, I get that he's like a hardcore Catholic in abortion and everything, but they know it's a demonic baby, so that well, just never vampires, set Vampires, you think that would really change his perspective on things. Right. Cause, right. Yeah, so I think that was just King's way of making sure that that wasn't an option, but it just always didn't set with me with that character that he would be that adamant about making sure she doesn't have an abortion of a demon. Um, and there, there's no shadow of a doubt, you know, she's not even showing or nothing. And, uh, but yeah, that's, that's my dark tower discussion. That's it. I promise. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go on a tangent. I just wanted to get you guys' uh, opinion on that. I didn't know. I thought you might've remembered that part, Sean. I don't remember any of that. Okay. That's where I'm at right now in the story. And that threw me because, uh, I, I didn't really remember it either. It happens really fast, but it just seemed out of character for Callahan. Um, speaking of Salem's Lot, though, do you prefer the original or the Rob Lowe? Honestly, I can't give you an accurate answer. I saw the first Salem's Lot back in 2005 when I was first getting into horror movies, and I haven't seen it since. I saw the 2004 Rob Lowe one. Okay, that was Texas... 2011 so like nine years ago so i can't remember enough to really give you a straight answer on that i i haven't seen the second one but i remember the first one really well and i i remember even though it's a cheeseball tv movie the the lighting alone is worth the price of admission for me and james mason is worth the price of admission for me like I, I I don't know if you guys, since you're youngins and all, ever got to really see, you know, James Mason, you know, in his heyday, but he was so perfect in that role. And it was, I, that was one of, that's, to me, that's one of the most memorable things about that is was James. Was he Callahan? Hmm? Was he Callahan? No, I think he was, I he was. I don't remember the character's name, but he was he was evil. He was a bad guy. Oh, he was the bad. Oh, I know. Okay, Stoker yeah. or <clears throat> Draker or whatever the dude's name was. Um, Bar Barlow. Bar yeah. Barlow. Um, James Cromwell played Callahan in the remake, and that's who I picture Callahan as. Oh, uh, I, can't, I can't. I think Rutger Hauer was the main vampire in the 2004 one. Yeah, Rutger. I like Rutger, but. I don't know what all the big fuss was about his acting because he was kind of, you know, just one dimensional and everything I saw him in. Um, well, I, I like his work. I think I think he he came to fame in uh, what in 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 Blade Runner, and that sort of was his strength was to to be that stone face, but to have this one scene that was so emotionally packed. Wasn't so, he the hitcher? Oh, he was the hitcher too. Oh, yeah. Yes. That was really. Uh, I'll tell you an actor who scares me, and that's Jonathan Banks, um, Mike he's... from Breaking Bad. Oh, he I just, watched he's that just show. got dead eyes, man. He he just he's he's another one dimensional person, but uh, he he creeps me out, man. I, I I don't know. I don't think I could sit and have a conversation. I don't think I could look at him while I'm talking to him. Um, I think he's thinking about how to kill me or something. Um, <laughs> Scares the shit out of me. So, a lot of projects, a lot of horror movies coming up. Um, 
I'm excited for the new stand. I'm curious to see how that plays out. I'm I'm happy that these uh, Stephen King works are getting remade as uh, uh, TV miniseries again. The only way you can really do it justice, the movies are too short. Right. They yeah, cut yeah. Too much out. Yeah, Dark Tower should have always been a TV series, like well, on HBO you, you or something. Know what the, you know what the, 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 the plan was for Dark Tower through two different pitches was... It, movie series, movie series. Movie, yeah, so um, that, so that, that first movie was sort of an orphan of that concept, which is part of why it was such a mess. Because I think they did, they were in the middle of the movie and realized they weren't going to be able to pull off the rest of it. And they're just like, okay, we'll just do it. Yeah. And they kind of, they kind of shoehorned in the horn to make it more of a sequel to the books than, yeah. uh, yeah. It kind of reminded me of the mummy remake where they tried to add in Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the mummy, Frankenstein, just like all yeah. into one movie. And it was they're all gonna, like, that was they're their, up there their dark universe piece of junk thing that Tom, they were Tom Cruise doing. ruined that movie for me. Oh yeah, Tom Cruise, well he hijacked the whole he hijacked the whole thing. Yeah. Because it, like, it had to be the Tom Cruise show and he only in a mummy. Right. And he agreed to do it only if he could become essentially the big bad or or a recurring character which was completely separate from the mummy you know all the classic horror things. It was just like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Like I, I was, I, w I wish they could have pulled off the dark universe in a modern setting, but it has its place in history, and I just don't see how they can recapture that magic. Um, but what I was trying to say about the miniseries with the King works, like the Stand, I'm excited about that, and I would like to see because there's two that I that they made that I can I can watch, but they're just. They were ahead of their time. They shouldn't have tried them yet, but nowadays I think they could do them better. And that's the Tommyknockers and the Langoliers. Because mm -hmm. both of those just, the like the, the CG and stuff just was so dated. Yeah. Right? Watching now, but I think if they tried those now, they could actually make really good uh, miniseries for those two stories. Well, Tommyknockers I could see as a, as a series. I, Langoliers, I... I doesn't feel like a series to me. Oh, I mean, it, like I mean, a remake of the movie they did of it because oh, it was like yeah. it was like a three-hour thing. I think is all it was. Right, because it's all on a plane, so it'd be yeah. really it would be really hard to to stretch that out all that much longer. I mean, I mean, like a mini series, like a remake of what they did before, but with modern technology. I got it. Got uh, it. Because back, because what they had then, those stories were just too much for what they could do then. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's what ruins the Langoliers is when they actually show up. Uh, you know, and it's it's just so bad. Yeah, that and that's a problem because 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 everything about that story is really interesting, and yes. and then and then if you have a a, a a stupid looking monster, it ruins everything. Look like a bunch of dust bunnies, you know, just with, <laughs> with teeth or whatever attacking them. Um, what what projects are you guys excited about? I'm excited about the new stand coming out, uh, movies, TV series, anything. What you got? New Texas Chainsaw um, is going to be produced by Fede Alvarez, who did the new Evil Dead remake. And I gotta admit, I'm not 100% sold on the new plot of the new Leatherface, but he's had great work done, so I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. I mean, just the description of the new Leatherface is something new that we have never seen before, and I just... Either it's going to be really, really good, or it's going to be like the last Texas Chainsaw movie, the one called Leatherface, and I think it was 2017 or 18. It had to be one of the worst Texas Chainsaw movies I've ever seen. And talking I'm about the Adam Marcus one? one. Huh? You're talking about the Adam Marcus one? Well, Marcus. his ran into a lot of problems behind the scenes. Wait, the, wait did, which one are you talking about? Didn't Adam Marcus do the, the first reboot? That one's good. The, Adam Marcus. Yeah, because he he did Adam. Adam There's been like that. three remakes so far of Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, so it's Texas Chainsaw. Are you Mad talking about Texas Reboot. Chainsaw 3D? 3D. Yes. Yeah, no, I like that one. I didn't okay. like the one that was just called Leatherface, where Leatherface is like eight years old. Okay. 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 That yeah. was the one I hated because in the movie he's eight. He gets taken away from the family, put in an asylum. They change his name. They mix him around with a bunch of kids. 
So a bunch of people escape, and the whole movie you're trying to figure out which one's Leatherface. Is it the skinny, articulate guy? Is it the big, fat guy with the long hair that carries a chainsaw? Like, you know, you're trying to figure out like, which one it is, and then it tries, to, it tries to twist you at the end. And when I was done with the movie, I wanted to just throw it out the fucking window. <laughs> I don't that? know about another remake, though. That's They've done so many. Yeah. Well, it depends. I mean, the 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 reboot, the first reboot, the Adam Marcus reboot, I thought was a really good reimagining of it. I mean, especially considering how raw the original movie is, and and how it felt more like like a documentary. That are you, you talking about the two thousand the two thousand three Jessica Biel one? Yes, that one. Okay, yeah, that, that, one, that was that a different one. The, it looks like Adam Marcus wrote the screenplay for Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh, which okay. is a sequel to the original that came out in 2013. The original? Oh, no. It, the, the, it's a sequel that came out in 2013, but it's a sequel to the original from 78. Or from oh, the 70s. oh, oh, okay. Yeah, because in 2003, they remade the original, and then in 2006, they did a prequel to the remake, yeah, and then 2013, yeah. Yeah, don't like, I don't, I, that's actually what got me out of it, because the second one, the beginning, I thought was terrible. So I never saw 3D, and then there's another one te- just that's just Texas Chainsaw after that. Yeah, tech, uh, it, it was just called Texas Chainsaw, and then it had 3D added to it. But that's the 2013 one that, you know, is a sequel to the original. See, it's confusing. It is. So it is really confusing. It's not as confusing as like the Halloween movies. At least Friday the Thirteenth just goes in one direction. See, yeah. they, they, see, David thought it was connected, in which which he thought it was connected to the the beginning and the other one, the one that Adam Marcus did, because it sounds like it's part three. 3D, I know. Right? I, I need, so I need a damn roadmap in the reboot series because, yes, but it's a because, sequel to the original. Because the original, the because because I think of the original cycle, like one of them was called Leatherface. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. The third one is called Leatherface, the right. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Three, but it ignores two and branches off of the first one, right. I guess. The fourth one is called Next Generation, right. and it, it, it's a remake sequel-ish of the first movie. It has a completely different family. Right. Then they then they scrapped everything and did right. Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Then right. it was the beginning, which is a it, prequel to this one. Right. Then they scrapped those ones and okay. did Texas Chainsaw 3D, which branches off the first original. So it's like Halloween 2018. Oh. Yeah, I and then... Realize that I thought the, la- oh. the latest one, Leatherface, is supposed to be a prequel to the original Texas Chainsaw. But to me, the characters are absolutely nothing like they are in the original. Is I can't Bill see Mosley any one of these characters becoming who they become in the original. Is it Bill Mosley in 3D? Bill Mosley came back, but he's playing Drayton Sawyer from the original, yeah. even though Bill Mosley played. Chop Top in the second one. Yeah, but he he did come back. He he's playing a character in the. Okay, so the 2013 one is kind of like what Halloween did with Halloween 2018. They ignored all the sequels. This is the new sequel to the original. Oh. That's what you're saying. Yeah, because it takes place right after the girl gets away in the original. Okay. The cops come to the house That's and the all Adam the has to figure out See, how they're going like to cover that. up this mess. And then it jumps like 30 years, and yeah. then it's. What what happened to the family? You know, in the thirty years, because we're you know, in Sean Campbell know. heaven right now. This is his franchise, man. He knows <laughs> what he's talking about. This That's is what, awesome. look, like re- read this synopsis with me. This is all I'll say on the subject. This is going to be the synopsis for the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, twenty twenty one. Okay. Okay. What? All right. Leatherface is named Kenny, and it says he's going to be. A oh my God, big, big, big build guy. He's going to be complex. He won't speak. Primarily expresses himself with guttural noises, uh, pig-like squeals. He spends time watching TV. Uh, he shields his face because he doesn't want his picture taken. Um, and apparently he will eventually get a new skin mask. And there's this old lady that watches him because he's an abandoned children or he's been in child or something in a Texas home. That's all that they released. I don't even know what to make of that. 
I would love to see all that on the back of a DVD box. Exactly what you read, you know, just like, like, like just the basic somebody's. Like uh, I trust Fede Alvarez, but what the, what the hell is that? It sounds like a casting call more than anything. What you just yeah. read, it sounds like a casting call almost. But out of all of them, man, out of all the reboots and remakes, the Adam Marcus one's my favorite so far. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that wrong. Um, Nis, uh, what's his name? Marcus, Marcus Nispel directed the yeah. first. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I got confused because the word Marcus was okay. coming. And also, when you started describing the new, the new Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. And that his name is Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> I started thinking that there was some sort of crossover with South Park because <laughs> most of what you said actually applies to Kenny. He doesn't really talk. He covers his face. <laughs> He's hard to kill. <laughs> he makes guttural noises, covers mm -hmm. his face. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, tr I trust the... I trust Fede Alvarez, but I mean that that's a weird that's a weird intro to a new Texas Chainsaw. But then again, that last one they did completely just threw the mythos right out the window. Yeah, the last one was just bad, man. I couldn't even. It's kind of like Part Three. I can't watch it. I try to watch it. I can't get through it. Well, it's uh, like it's, I wanted to see Drayton Sawyer when he was like twenty, but then that character was just nothing like that character. I can't see it like I, said, I couldn't see any character in this movie becoming who they became in the original Texas Chainsaw, even though all the characters are there. Mm. Um, David, do you have a certain movie or series you're looking forward to that's uh, in the pipeline? Um, it just fr fresh off of seeing the first one, it, it Terrifier 2. Okay. Because uh, I'm, I'm super, like, I think the first one was really well made, and it's really gory. In, in a way, I haven't seen a movie be gory in a long time that wasn't just flat-out torture. Gratuitous. Yeah. I mean, it Did was you... gratuitous, but it was, it was like an 80s version, not, a, not an Eli Roth hostile version of it. Yeah. And, and also that it was just such a great character who was truly creepy, even though he was a clown and he smiled a lot and did, even did some goofy stuff. It was, it was great. But then, then the ending happens, and I don't understand anything about that. And now I see the clown in the sequel trailer, and I'm like, okay, I have to figure out what's going on here. Is it? Did you see the original? What the original Terrifier? Um, it was a movie called All Hallows Eve, and it was a different actor playing Art the Clown. But it's about this woman babysitting some kids, and someone threw a videotape in the kid's jack o' lantern. And they watch it, and it's three segments of people getting haunted by this thing called Art the Clown. And they kind of, they, they recast it that. Art. They streamlined it into a movie, gave it a bigger budget, and called it Terrifier. And now the guy who played Art in Terrifier is going to be in the sequel. But it was a different guy playing Art in the original All Hallows' Eve that came out in 2013. I'll have to watch that tonight. Yeah, me too. I'm going to have to check that out. I had it's, no it's, idea. Good. it's good. It's a good prototype for what Art would do if they gave him a bigger budget. Because, right. you know, like, I didn't have any problems at All Hallows' Eve. It's a fun romp. It's just I feel like Art was almost like almost like he was – how am I trying to say this? Like fr like Freddy in – bringing it full circle. Freddy yeah. in Deadly Disguise, he's sprinkled in, but he's not maybe the main – freaky thing in each segment but he is in there and he ties all three together I and i feel like he was a really popular character and that's what led to terrifier uh based on what i've read based on what i i think I happened but yeah check it out it's, it's pretty good i think it was on one of the streaming services uh maybe netflix yeah i love anthology horror man so i'm gonna have to check that out like i love trick or treat i wish they'd do another one um i love the vhs ones those were pretty good uh, the last one wasn't as good as the other ones. Um, I'm loving, loving um, the the new uh, Creep Show TV series. I'm really excited for a set for the second season of that. Have you seen that Creep Show? Um, I hadn't seen it. It's on Shutter. Ah, that's why I haven't seen it. Okay, yeah, it, they it's uh, it's and everybody uh, it, it's really uh, Tom Savini's working on it. Oh, wow. uh, Stephen, Stephen King and Joe Hill have, have done some stuff for it, um, and it's really good. It's really true to the movies. 
I didn't know until recently there was a Creep Show three that had like this psychic woman kind of as the thing that ties the stories together. And I watched it. It wasn't horrible. But yeah, there's a Creep Show three that was made in like two thousand and one. Oh and wow! It, yeah, it's it's not great. I wouldn't run out and watch it. But it, if you want to see it, just because you like the first two Creep Shows and you want to complete that, then it's out there. Um, yeah. I just watched the first one a couple weeks ago for the first time in a long time, and I thought it really held up. Yeah. And then I haven't watched the second one in a long time, but I I remember not really liking the the second one, and it was it's a so cheesier. it's cheesier. It's it's obviously ro low budget. It has one of my favorite stories in it, which is the raft. Yeah. But yeah. in the movie, the ra the 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 blob in the raft looks like they're just dragging around a black garbage bag. I thought it you looked know? like Tar Man got flattened. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't work for me, but 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 I loved the stories because I loved the stories when I had read them. Yeah, I didn't know there was a three either. A funny story about Creep Show too. When I was a kid, I had seen it, and as a teenager, I kept remembering this scene of something about a ring going through. Uh, two pieces of wood, you know, like a class ring, mm -hmm. and I could not, and it took me forever. And three years later, I was watching Creep Show Two again, and that's what it was. Like I had nightmares for years about the raft story from when <laughs> I was a kid, and I couldn't remember it. And then when I rewatched it, I was like, Oh my God, that's what it was. Uh, I thought I was going crazy, and then it, it was when the guy gets pulled through uh, through the through the raft, and it's right. it's his ring there. Uh, right. So yeah. Oh, this has been a great, This it's been like an hour here, and it doesn't even seem like it's uh, been that long. I was thinking, when should I freak people out and go, uh, did you hit record? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a lot, I had a blast, guys. This has been great. I yeah. could sit here and talk forever, you know, if uh, if we weren't recording and trying to keep it, you know, under an hour. Um, mm -hmm. I, always have, I always have a blast talking to you guys. Likewise. Is there anything else you guys wanted to bring up before we... Uh, I think I got everything on my list. <laughs> oh yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface, Sawyer's. You got all that checked I out. I wrote Dolly Dearest too. Oh okay, yeah, check, that's. I think that's what I said earlier. I was going to bring up in after the slash. Um, watch that movie, man. It's pretty creepy. It's a pretty creepy. Yeah. Movie. Um, and it's funny. The the brother, the sister gets this possessed doll, and it's not so much like Chucky. It's more demonically possessed. Kind of like that video game that's coming out called Charlie the Legend. It's like Chucky, but it's a, it's instead of like a, a serial killer possessing Chucky, it's like a demon possessing him. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like an asymmetrical game. Um, and the brother of the, little, of the sister that has the doll, uh, at one point he's like reading a book, says why do bad things happen to good kids or something. There, it's got humor in the movie. Uh, and, but the effects when the doll comes to life are just so creepy, man. It's obviously made, you know, in, in the late 80s, early 90s, but it's practical effects, and yeah. it's pulled off really I'm good. Pretty good. Those. It's nightmare fuel. It's pretty creepy, the doll. Yeah, thing. I'll watch it and give you my opinion the next time we do an After the Slash. <laughs> I, I, I kind of ruined it a little bit by telling you that, because it's one of those movies, kind of like the Pinocchio movie, you know, yeah. uh, where you... You're, you're you're curious if the doll is actually alive or if you know if the kid is going crazy or whatever but yeah the doll's actually alive um <laughs> so it takes a while, it takes a while to get to that um okay. so i kind of ruined it for you i'm sorry but uh i'll remember that next time we do an episode that, i'll spoil something for the, you the spoiler alert from earlier counts here yes yes we did Anybody that was watching that, watching this now. Hey, the name of the of the podcast, Out of Print Slashers, it's abbreviated to Oops. So <laughs> there's the reason right there, Oops. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, thank you all so much, patrons, for supporting the channel. Couldn't do this without you. You're all awesome. Love you all. Um, have a great night. Have a great week. We'll see you next week on After the Slash. David, thank you so much for dropping thank by you. again. Uh, for Thanks writing for amazing me. books. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Even if we're not talking about one of your books some week, man, if you want to drop by on After the Slash, we'd love to just 
sit here and, and talk, you know, shoot the breeze. It's fun. When we do this in October, we need to wear costumes. Okay. Make this a little interesting. Okay. Gonna be Leatherface? <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> I don't have a good mask. I'll come as Sean. You know, a friend actually did that one time. She kept telling really? me, oh, it's going to be surprise. I, I always wore, I always wore like the same outfit. And she came as me. She actually like made the tattoo, my tattoo and had my beanie wow. and stuff. I'm like, nice. wow. She came as me. It's awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. But night guys. Yeah, All right. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, good night, everyone. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a good night.